welcome you all in the 17th lecture of electronics measurement and instrumentation. In this lecture, I will discuss the Q meter, what are the different application of Q meter and what we can measure by using Q meter. So, uh, this is the outline of my lecture under which I will cover the working principle of Q meter, what are the different measurements that we can do by using Q meter. Uh, there are three methods, direct methods, uh, series, uh, series substitution method, shunt substitution method, then there are sources of error in Q meter and then the application of Q meter. So, um, as we can see in the uh, diagram, the Q meter is basically an instrument which measures the storage factor or the quality factor of any coil or it can also measure the electrical properties of the coil and the capacitor at radio frequency. We can measure the inductance or the capacitance of component uh, by using bridges circuit, but uh, in bridge circuit uh, we are comparing the uh, unknown uh, inductance or capacitance with the known standard inductance and capacitance. So, they may have some problem with uh, suppose a standard component is changing their values with the frequency. So, at radio frequency these bridges are not much suitable for the measurement of uh, inductance and capacitance or the quality factor of the signal or uh, they are also not very much useful uh, for the measurement of the resistance which we are using at very high frequency. So, for high frequency measurement Q meters are preferred. So, quality factor is very important factor and we know that it shows a relationship between the uh, stored energy and the dissipated energy and this Q meter was developed by the uh, William D. Longlin uh, in 1934 uh, with the, uh, the Boon Toned Radio Corporation. So, the working principle of Q meter is the working principle is based on the res series resonance circuit. So, in series resonance circuit, uh, suppose uh, there are three component that is uh, yeah, or two component that is inductor and capacitor and they are connected in series. So, here the resistance uh, inductance and capacitance are shown. So, here the capacitance and inductance is shown, this R represents the either the uh, represent the internal resistance of inductor or it may be a separate resistance. So, when this uh, uh, circuit is at resonance, resonance means uh, the resonance frequency when x c is equal to x l, the reactive component the capacitive reactance is equivalent to the resistive react uh, the inductive reactance. So, when capacitive reactance is equivalent to the inductive reactance the this circuit is known as that this circuit is at resonance and at that time the voltage across the capacitor or the voltage across the inductor is very high. Uh, the maximum voltage we can get across the capacitor when the circuit is at resonance. So, at resonance frequency we know that x l is equal to x c and suppose the I current is flowing through this circuit. So, it will be E l is equal to I x l and E c uh, is equal to I x c and the voltage across voltage drop across resistance is I r. So, quality factor we know quality factor is equal to x l by r and it is since x l is equal to x c. So, it is x c by i r and now if we multiply it by i i both uh, numerator and denominator then we will get E c by E. So, E c q is suppose if E is constant then this q is proportional to E c. So, by we can uh, connect a meter across this capacitor and we can calibrate that meter in terms of q. So, the meter which is placed across that capacitor will uh, directly measure the value of q. <laughs> this is the uh, component uh, the uh, q meter uh, that we are using in laboratories. This Q meter consists of an oscillator which has a frequency which can produce a frequency of 50 kilohertz to 50 megahertz. Then there is a very uh, 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 very low value of resistance RSH, it, its value is 0 uh, 0.02 ohm and it is connected across the oscillator. So, we can see this oscillator is a 
uh, it is a source with a very voltage source with a very uh, low value of shunt resistance. Then a meter is connected across that resistance to read the value of voltage drop across this RSH and this voltmeter is of thermocouple type. Then uh, the capacitor across the capacitor there is an electronic voltmeter is connected and this meter is calibrated in terms of Q. So, it will, di it will directly read uh, or display the value of Q. Then there are four terminals in this meter the two terminals T 1, T 2 and T 3, T 4. When, uh, the, when we uh, use the shunt measurement methods, shunt uh, uh, compensation method, then we connect the coil between T 3 and T 4. When we use series method, then we will connect the coil or the capacitor between terminal T 2 and T 1. So, this is the uh, uh, the construction of uh, Q meter that uh, the shunt resistance uh, introduce almost no resistance into that circuit and then Q we can measure calibrate Q is equal to E C by E then we can calcul calibrate the Q meter by this uh, this Q is proportional to E C we directly calibrate uh, the meter by Q and then it will show the uh, uh, value of the Q. The Q uh, when we measure the Q the value that is shown by the meter is basically showing all the values which is uh, including the, uh, the value of the capacitor, the value of the source resistance. So, it will incorporate the circuit Q also. So, maybe the defined Q is higher than the applied Q. So, the Q we, we, uh, when uh, the Q displayed by the meter may be less than the actual Q of the coil or the capacitor. So, now the measurement of uh, Q meter by direct method, series substitution method, shunt substitution method. In direct method uh, uh, is used for the measurement of the resistance inductance capacitance which are having a medium value of uh, medium value and series substitution methods are used for the low impedance components like a small resistance, a small inductance and large capacitance. Capacitance is large because X C is equal to 1 by F C. So, it is uh, C uh, X C is a small means when the capacitor value is large. So, uh, this uh, when capacitance value is large then we use a series substitution method. Similarly, in shunt substitution method when the large impedance is there or the small value of capacitance is there and high value of resistance are there. So, direct method we uh, will connect the component whose value we want to measure uh, in this circuit in between terminal 1 and 2 and then uh, we will uh, resonate we will change the value of this tuning capacitance and by varying the value of uh, capacitance we will see whether the this meter is showing the maximum value. When this meter will show the maximum value it means the circuit is in resonance condition and at that time X C is equal to X L and this x c is equal to x l that is 1 by 2 pi s is equal to 2 pi f l and by this we can calculate the value of r l that is 1 by 2 pi f square into c. So, we can uh, read the value of frequency, we can read the value of c and then we can find out the value of inductance. Similarly, we can calculate the value of q also. Then there is series substitution method, in series substitution method the unknown impedance whose uh, uh, value we want to define that is placed between the two terminal uh, there is an working coil and then we, uh, we can connect uh, this unknown component with the working coil and we will place it between T 1 and T 2 means it in series with the capacitor and in series with the signal <coughs> uh, generator. So, uh, first we will measure uh, we will uh, this uh, this component uh, low impedance component whose uh, uh, we want to measure we will short this component. So, th there is no existence of this component we can we short the shorting trap. So, we will short this and then we will vary the value of vary the frequency of the signal generator. So, when we will vary the frequency of the generator and we will note that the maximum value of Q meter. So, when it will show the maximum value of Q meter it means the circuit is at resonance and at that time we will uh, note down the value of C 1. 
So, after uh, this uh, we will open this circuit and open this uh, strap. So, when we open this uh, strap means this z the unknown impedance is now connected to this meter. Now, uh, we will vary now we will keep this signal generator frequency fixed and we will vary the capacitor. So, when we will vary the capacitor and we will note down whether this meter is reading the maximum it is showing maximum reading when it shows maximum reading means the circuit is now in resonance. So, it means the first time when it is showing C 1 value it is only defining the circuit uh, resonance condition and then uh, the unknown is added. So, at that time the C 2 value means it included the circuit uh, value as well as the uh, this uh, unknown impedance also. So, at that time the first case when there is only circuit uh, resonance is there then x is equal to x l this is the standard coil x l and it is equivalent to so 1 by omega c is equal to omega l and so q 1 is equal to 1 by omega r c 1. So, when we connect the unknown uh, impedance in series with that, so unknown impedance uh, uh, x uh, reactance is equal to the second reactance and minus the x l. So, second component reactance is uh, second time uh, the re uh, resonance appears when the value of capacitance is C 2. So, it is 1 by omega C 2 minus first time value is omega l. So, it is 1 by omega C 2 minus 1 by omega C 1. So, now x c the unknown impedance is equal to C 1 minus C 2 by omega C 1 C 2. Now, if C 1 is greater than C 2 x is inductive and if C 1 is less than C 2 the, the component is capacitive. Now, if it is inductive then omega l is equal to C 1 minus C 2 by omega C 1 minus C 2 ok it is C 2 it is C 2 ok. So, omega l is equal to C 1 minus C 2 by this uh, in previous uh, from this formula 1 by the we will cross multiply it. So, it is omega C 1 minus omega C 2 by omega square C 1 C 2. So, it is this one omega l. So, l is equal to C 1 minus C 2 omega square C 1 C 2. Now, if unknown is capacitance, so it is l in place of omega l we will write 1 by omega C and here C 1 minus C 2 by omega C 1 C 2 ok. So, it is C 1 C is equal to the value of capacitance is equal to C 1 minus C 2 by C 1 C 2. Now, the uh, we have to find out the reactive component of the inductance. So, reactive component previously uh, it was uh, R 1 is equal to x 1 by q 1 and uh, after connecting the component R 2 is equal to x 2 by R uh, q 2. So, uh, the difference between these two resistance is the unknown uh, resistance. So, unknown resistance is equal to R 2 minus R 1 that is x 2 minus x 2 by q 2 minus x 1 by q 1. So, when we substitute the value of uh, these uh, x 2 q 2 x 1 q 1 then we will get the value of uh, resistance uh, in internal resistance of the reactance that is this one. Now, if uh, it is a pure uh, similarly we can calculate the q of the coil. So, q is equal to x s minus r s and we substitute the value of r s from here and x s from uh, and x s then we will get the quality factor of the component by this formula. Similarly, suppose the unknown component is resistance means there is no change in the value of capacitance uh, and uh, by varying the resonance uh, resonance frequency then R s that is the it is a pure resistance and its value is R 2 minus R 1. So, we will substitute the value of from here R 2 and R 1 x 2 by q 2 minus x 1 by q 1 here and we will solve it then we will get the value of this one that the resistance equal to q 1 minus q 2 by omega C 1 q 1 C 2 q 2. Similarly, in shunt substitution method when the component value is high then we are using shunt substitution method. So, in shunt substitution method uh, the component is connected in T 3 T 4 terminal and again the same process we are applying here uh, since we do not want first we want to cali we want to measure the value of capacitor when this component is not connected. So, we will open this component from here we will open this component and then we will vary the signal generator frequency 
and by varying when this meter will read the maximum value it means the circuit is in resonance and we note down the value of this capacitance at the resonance that is C1. Then we will place this component we will short this uh, circuit and then this component is placed in parallel to the C1 and then we will keep this signal generator frequency constant and we will vary the capacitor uh, value when the capacitor value is varied and when we will get the maximum value of Q meter it means again the resonance is achieved with this unknown component and we will note down the value of C2. So, when C2 value is note down first time for the reference condition when there is no component Q1 is equal to XL by R and it is equivalent to 1 by omega R C1. Now, cap capacitor is again tuned to get new resonance. So, at that time uh, the component is uh, connected in parallel to the capacitor. So, in parallel we will get X L is equal to X C 2 uh, because uh, X C 2 and X P are in parallel. So, both are in parallel. So, we will get X L is equal to X C 2 X P by X C 2 plus X P. So, by take uh, by substituting all the values values of x p x c 2 and x c 2 and plus x p we will get x p is equal to 1 by omega c 1 minus c 2. Now, if component is inductive then we will place in place of x p we will place omega l p. So, when omega x p is equal to omega l p then we will get omega l p is equal to this one. So, it will be 1 by omega square C 1 minus C 2. If unknown is a capacitance, so X p is equal to 1 by omega C p when we substitute here 1 by omega C p then omega omega uh, will be cancel out means X p is equal to 1 by omega C p is equal to 1 by omega C 1 minus C 2. So, what will happen this omega omega will be cancel out and C p is equal to C 1 minus C 2. So, by this method we can uh, measure the capacitance value. Now, suppose we want to measure the uh, there is a parallel resistance of this uh, circuit uh, this component. So, uh, to get that value R t is equal to we know that R is equal to uh, this Q is equal to X L by R and for the series circuit and for the parallel circuit Q is equal to X R by X L. So, here R T is equal to Q 2 X L and that is equivalent to Q 2 X C 1 previous condition that is equivalent to Q 2 omega by omega C 1. So, now similarly we can measure the conductance of the coil. So, conductance of the coil is equal to G P is equal to 1 by R L P and this R L P is equal to um, 1 by R plus J omega L. So, we will multiply numerator and denominator by R minus J omega L to get the real component from there. So, we will get the real component and the neglecting imaginary term it will be R by R square plus omega square L square and 1 by R T is equal to R 1 by R P plus 1 by L P. So, when we substitute all the values 1 by R p is equal to 1 by R t minus 1 by L p then we substitute 1 by R t is equal to omega C 1 by Q 1 minus R by R square plus omega square. So, by solving this here we see that there is a term that is 1 there is 1 plus omega square L square by R square. So, we can neglect this 1 term and we will get omega C 1 by Q 1 minus 1 by R Q 1 square. So, this is the value of R p, R p is equal to Q 1 Q 2 by omega C 1 bracket in bracket Q 1 minus Q 2. So, this value of R p is achieved and similarly we can find out the value of Q. So, Q is equal to again R p by X p. So, by substituting the value of R p from here and X p from previous uh, slide we will get R p by X p this value. So, C 1 minus C 2 into Q 1 minus Q 1 Q 2 by C 1 uh, in bracket Q 1 minus Q 2. So, this value we will get. So, in this way we can measure the value of 
the resistance, inductance, capacitance and Q of the circuit by using uh, Q meter. Similarly, we can also measure the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So, for measuring the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, we know that the transmission line if uh, we use a series resonance when the impedance is low. So, when the impedance is low, we use the series method and in series method we know that the uh, characteristic impedance Z naught is equal to R naught plus J omega naught, J x naught for the transmission line. So, uh, the reactance per unit length of the line is the, uh, is the reactance divided by the length L. So, series resonance occur when the line is short circuited and the line length is an even multiple of lambda by 4 and when open circuited and odd multiple of lambda by 4. So, we will short circuit here. So, it is to open or short circuit that depends upon key what is the length of the uh, transmission line. So, if the length of the transmission line is even multiple of lambda by 4, then we will short circuit the, uh, the we will short circuit the terminals of the transmission line and when this input impedance is low, then we will place it this transmission line in series. So, here we can see that the inductance and this meter uh, this uh, generate uh, this uh, source is in series. So, this uh, transmission line is in series. So, here we can measure the value of the uh, uh, in uh, characteristic impedance of the transmission line. If we want to measure uh, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line whose uh, impedance is high, then we will connect it in the shunt. So, here we can see that this, uh, this uh, transmission line is connected in shunt with this coil. So, in this method is used and uh, when we want to measure the, uh, the characteristic impedance of the circuit, then if uh, we will short circuit it, if the it is the odd multiple of uh, lambda by 4 and we will open it if the uh, it is even multiple of lambda by 4. So, there is source of errors in Q meter because whatever we have measured the in Q meter uh, that is uh, also including the circuit resistance and circuit Q also. So, uh, the Q that we are getting from the shunt resistance, so the Q maximum Q is equal to omega naught L by R, but here there is because of this resistance RSS there is a an error. So, this the true value because the measured value is omega naught L by R, but the true value is uh, the measured value include the Q of the shunt resistance. So, the true value of the component is equivalent to Q measured 1 plus RSH by R. So, this R due to this RSH there is a uh, variation in Q. So, the measured Q is smaller than the true value of the Q. Similarly, uh, there is an error due to the distribution capacitance. So, to determine the uh, error due to distribution capacitance because there is a distribution capacitance in between this uh, L circuit. Suppose we have inductive, so again it has some distribution capacitance and the capacitance is also distribution capacitance is from the circuit also, it is generated from the circuit also. So, what we will do, we, we first measure the, we will get the resonance by varying the frequency. So, suppose at that time we have measured, uh, we got a resonance resonance means the high value of Q. So, we got the resonance at frequency F 1. Then next time we will keep the C 1 value constant, C, we will not vary the C, but we will vary the frequency, we will uh, vary the frequency by twice of the previous frequency. So, first time uh, the F is equal to uh, 1 by 2 pi root L C. So, for first time when uh, the uh, resonance appears, at that time f 1 is suppose the first frequency is 1 by 2 pi root L C 1 plus C D. Then uh, we will uh, uh, we will keep uh, this uh, signal generator at double of the previous frequency. So, f 2 is twice of f 1 and uh, the value we will get uh, suppose C 2, C 2 also includes C D and C 1 also includes C, uh, this C D distribution capacitance. So, this C uh, f 2 is twice of f 1. So, we will set F 2 is equal to 2 by 2 into F 1. So, we will get, uh, we will 
equal uh, this uh, we will equate both the equations this and this and then we will get C d is equal to C 1 minus 4 C 2 by 3. So, this is the distribution capacitance. So, we can find out the value of distribution capacitance by this formula. So, this is one example of uh, suppose uh, the self capacitance is given C 1 C 2 is given and the frequency is given the first frequency is 2 megahertz and second frequency is 4 megahertz. So, we can find out the value of the distribution capacitance. So, that we can find out the actual value of the capacitance that we have measured. So, this formula by this formula we can find out C 1 minus 4 C 2 by 3 and we can find out the distribution capacitance value. Similarly, the second question we want to measure the percentage error introduced in the calculation of Q. So, we knew, uh, know that, uh, that the Q is equal to 1 by omega R C. Then we will calculate this value suppose this is 245. Uh, q and then the indicated q of the coil that is r plus this resist uh, the, sh, uh, the error created by the shunt resistance. So, its value is 0 0.02 it is given here. So, uh, the next value is uh, by keeping this value we will get 244.5. Now, the percentage error is the difference between this these two divided by the measured error. So, it is the 0 0.2 percent. So, we can calculate in this way the error of the measurement. Application of Q meter, we can measure the any small capacitance or large inductance, we can also measure the effective resistance, we can also measure the behavior of the circuit at high frequency. So, we can measure the characteristic impedance of the, uh, uh, of the transmission line. So, that is all from my side. So, I have discussed about the Q meter, how we can measure different components values using the Q meter. Thank you all.